How masculine do you think you are? Let's take a look at the past. Around the time where there were still tribes, the masculine energy and the feminine energy of men and women were above 10, up to 20, maybe even 50. The men were strong and protective of the village. They didn't need to train. They didn't need to lift weights. Because they were defending the village every single day from people who would attack from other tribes, enemy tribes, who wanted to take their land and their farm and their woman and their children. And they were hunting every day, doing what, doing calisthenics, doing polysthenics every single day, doing cardio every single day, chasing a boar down. Just one boar, not even a small piglet, a large boar. The tribe needed to work together they need to make a plan to surround and kill the boar together. They didn't have to worry about diet because they ate what they were able to hunt and gather. And what they were hunting and gathering was the food around them, the resources they had available, not making the food, not making some vegan bullshit. They were just taking lettuce they grew from the ground, whole lettuce or rice or grains and they were taking the boar they hunted the day or the night before or the same day and they were having a feast a tribal feast at the end of the day every single day they were celebrating every single day just because they were able to eat just because they were able to work together and they were grateful to have each other by each other's side now let's look at the present. We have friend groups, we have family that can represent tribes. I guess jobs can be in place of hunting. And now we have to worry about what we eat since there's such a surplus of food around us. These actions I just listed are a bare representation. They are an allusion to what we did back then, what we did when we were still tribal. Now we have to go to some shitty job, sit in some chair, some wheelie chair, work in a cubicle with a computer, typing away, clicking away, just to get some paper, green paper, money, what we call money, and go to the grocery store and buy not even the grocery store. At the end of the day, you go and go to some bar or you go to like, this is what people look to at the end of the day. Eating unhealthy food, they go and buy dinner from McDonald's, Wendy's, KFC. That's That meat has been modified, fucked with, cooked in the most unhealthiest way. We used to just take a whole boar, skin it, and put it over a fire and let and just let it cook. Now we ha- we put food in oil, we deep fry it, we add extra calories, unhealthy calories, and that just makes us less mess, less masculine every time we take a bite. It lowers our testosterone, makes us look weak, and we know it's unhealthy. So in this video, we're gonna go over what a masculine man is, how to be like one, or even become one, and what a feminine woman is. I'm currently reading The Way of the Superior Man. This book, it's really good by David Data. And this video is heavily built from that book. So I suggest you go read it, go buy it at like a local bookstore, go read it. It's way better than just watching this, way better than watching any video. But there are three major traits of a masculine man. And they are all pulled from this book. And I wanna point these out. He lives with fear open-hearted, and chasing his purpose. Living with fear. Go buy the book. It's way better. This is just one of the traits. Go buy the book. You can watch this video while you're waiting for it to deliver. Just buy Way of the Superior Man. It's way better than just watching this video. But let's talk about living with fear, the first trait of a masculine man. You have a blade. The tip is the most dangerous part 
the closer you can get the blade to your eye, the more scared you get, the more fear you're living with. You're living with fear at that exact moment and one slight tap can kill you. Doing that every day can put you on the edge. You are living with what you fear and at that point, you don't fear it. Obviously, that's just a metaphor and example. Don't actually do that. But let's talk in real terms. Say you jog two miles every Saturday and Sunday. What's holding you back from jogging more? You're, you're healthy. You have no fractured bones, no splintered bones. You don't have any muscles torn. You just do cardio two miles every weekend. What's holding you back from going that third mile? Don't say it's because oh, I don't have enough stamina. You jog to build up stamina. It's as if, say, let's have another example. You're on the bench press. You feel like hitting a new P. You want to hit a new PR, but you're scared of getting crushed. Go get a spot. Put on what you think you can do and do the bench press. What is holding you back from doing the PR, the personal record, the 250, 225 pounds of bench press? What's holding you back? Your fear. You want to be able to go past your fear, what's limiting you every single day. You could apply this to just meditating, sleeping, and eating. If you're bulking, you can go past what you're supposed to do in like one meal. Or you can sleep earlier. Or you can meditate like 20, 30, maybe an hour even more. What is holding you back from eating more if you're on a bulk, sleeping more, or meditating more your fear your fear of not getting validation say your fear of being physically hurt or your fear of being late for work your fear of getting more fat there is a fear in all of us and we want to encounter that fear every day we want to live with that fear every day of our lives we want to we want to meditate 10 more minutes every single day of our lives. We want to go past what we can do. All the fear we have is what is limiting us. What is limiting you and me? What is limiting you from, say, meditating 10 more minutes? What's limiting me from eating more than I'm supposed to, even though I'm trying to do a clean bulk? What's, like, obvious I'm going to eat clean, but what's limiting you from reading 20 more pages, 10 more pages is fear. Fear. We need to live and encounter fear every single day so then we can improve, obviously, so we can become more masculine. Being open-hearted. What does this mean? It means to open up in times of closure, to accept things that may fear you or may stop you, to allow those who hate you, allowing your enemies to come in. So, say you're keeping eye contact with someone and at one point you want to break eye contact or you break eye contact or you want to break eye contact after say two minutes, you continuously hold eye contact with that person. Even if they look away, you're still looking at their eyes. You're still making direct eye contact. If they, if they go like, or, or they like, they're looking around at other things, they look back at you, you, they notice that you're still looking at them. You're still making eye contact with them. You're letting, you're not closing up. You're not breaking eye contact yourself. You're not closing up. You're keeping it. If your body tells you, if your body says to yell at your mom or your girlfriend or your significant other, if your body or your emotions tell you, yell back, they're yelling at you, yell back, fight back. You open your heart. You don't yell back. You give the person a hug. You tell the person, I love you. You tell them how grateful for you are for them every single day. You don't get into a whole argument because you know for a fact that will mess your relation and burn your bridge even more than you have. But giving that person a hug, even while they're yelling at you, even if they may struggle, 
even if they don't want that hug. You can tell them you love and appreciate them. It will change their direction and emotion so much. You're opening your heart in times of closure. That what it, that's what it means to be open-hearted. Opening your heart in times of closure. Chasing your purpose, not in just one singular category, like financially, relationship, mental health, physical health, personal records, but all of them. Chase your purpose in every single category of life. No matter the situation, a masculine man is always chasing his goals. Even if he were to be like homeless, if he were to be like the world's richest man, if he were to be with the world's worst woman or the world's best woman, a masculine man is always chasing his goals. He puts his goals first instead, in, instead of his relationship. If you're working towards your goal, you're gonna find a woman who will accompany you on that and will be perfectly fine. She will love the fact yet, she, in fact, she will love the fact that you're ignoring her because you have goals you want to achieve. She will love the fact that you're ignoring that you leave her for two days to go on to go climb a mountain and come back. She will love the fact that you go to the gym for three hours a day, not probably not three hours, like one hour, and then come back. She knows that if you are ignoring her, you're chasing your goals and she and a feminine woman loves a masculine man. Polar opposites attract. What is your purpose though? Think of it, I'm gonna take this example from the book as the uh, onion. There's a core of an onion and there's layers on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, 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 so on and so on. But each layer of that core or onion or whatever you wanna imagine it as, is a chapter of your life. So the very first layer is you getting into self-improvement. The second layer is you achieving a major goal, like getting a better physique. The third one is making a business, so on and so on. But you will never reach that core. Why? Because a masculine man, his purpose, his standards are, standards are so high, they're unachievable. That core will ne never be reached. And the layers just get smaller and smaller. Each chapter is going to get smaller and smaller or bigger and bigger and you're going to keep chasing because you're masculine you're going to keep digging towards the center because you're masculine you're going to keep running and jogging and just going and going and going why because you're masculine so how do you become the masculine man you apply it's simple as that. You don't just stay a student and spill out your information on a test. You take what you learn and you use it. That simple. Once you learn the traits and habits of a masculine man, you apply them. You just don't sit idle. You don't stay neutral in the polarity of feminine and masculine. You're right here. You want to move to the masculine side of the polarity. Feminine woman. If you don't know what a feminine woman is, think back to your childhood. When you were in elementary, what did you associate girls with? Flowers, the color pink, being emotional, being attractive, or maybe even crazy. You can tell if a woman is feminine or not, just based off of looks or maybe even how they talk, maybe even how they decide things. Here are the three main traits of a feminine woman. Actions based on feelings. They are the polar opposite of what you are. The complete opposite. Like if you're on your goal to becoming the masculine, you're going to find the, the feminine. And they're caring and loving. Now this video is about femininity. I only know a majority about feminine women from obviously the book, The Way of the Superior Man. They have like a whole chapter on women or they have a whole part on feminine women so i very much you suggest you go read it and if you want to know what a feminine woman is just go to chapter 24 and you'll learn have a good one